Hello, my name is Kristen Scott. I'm with the Madeira Interactive Technologies Institute. I will be presenting the paper, Human All Too Human, Nor Weather Radio and the Emotional Impact of Synthetic Voices. To give you a brief outline of our presentation, I will start with the context of our interest in synthetic speech on the radio, followed by a brief discussion of an exploratory focus group we conducted, and finally, I will explain the details of our analysis of relevant YouTube videos and comments. As part of an EU-funded community radio project, we are exploring integrating text-to-speech or TTS capabilities into an open-source technology stack for low-power FM radio stations. Our goals with this pr proposition include increasing accessibility to information for people without internet, turning useful data into content, and providing support for chronically understaffed community radio stations. Studies show that reactions to synthetic voices are subjective and influenced by a variety of factors, like the content, perceived speaker traits, and pronunciation. In the traditional listening test, Bird et al. found a correlation between perceived humanness and likability of synthetic voices. In practice, however, overly human-like features in conversational user interfaces, such as virtual companions or chatbots, have sometimes been found to lead to negative reactions, such as unrealistic expectations and frustration views that the interface is pre-programmed and inauthentic, and people being put off by a device presenting itself as human, considering it to be a lie, dishonest, or fake. We conducted an eight-person exploratory focus group about the concept of synthetic speech on the radio. Participants were introduced to the concept of generating community radio content using synthetic speech and content pulled from the internet. They were given the opportunity to experiment with a variety of voices and content. Three themes emerge from the exercise and discussion. Concerns about the level of connection possible with synthetic voices was a prominent theme. There was general agreement that radio was meant to be a kind of parasocial experience, that synthetic voices may be antithetical to this role. Participants tended to focus on a need for increasing the sense of humanness of the voices. Some suggested increasing tone variability and emotion. Other suggestions focused on introducing imperfections such as ums and ahs, or by adding ambient sounds such as paid flipping or pen dropping. Participants also reported specific conceptions about the types of voices that should be used for reading certain content, for example, preferring serious voices for news and friendly voices for stories. Now I'll move on to our analysis of the use of synthetic speech on NOAA Weather Radio. NOAA Weather Radio is from the U National Weather Service of the United States of America. We chose to focus on this topic as it is an example of a highly visible and regularly used application of synthetic voices in a radio context. The content of each local station is delivered almost entirely through synthetic voices. As of January 2014, the NWR network included over a thousand stations that covered about 97% of the U.S. population. Station frequencies are outside of the normal AM or FM broadcast range and require special receivers or weather radio. These radios are widely available and in some areas built directly into homes. In the late 90s, a computerized voice nicknamed Paul became the voice of Noah Weather Radio. In 2001, other voices were added, including a female voice, Donna, with the male voice, Tom, becoming the primary voice. In 2016, the National Weather Service rolled out a new system, which used, utilized a, a new voice and did not include these previous voices. This was a modern synthetic voice created by the company NeoSpeech. It was also named Paul. The voice was treated as a much improved version of the original Paul and came to be referred to by NOAA and its listeners using various nicknames such as Perfect Paul, Paul Jr., and New Paul. And we can listen to these voices now. A slow moving storm system will move across the northern Great Lakes region today and tonight. Snow associated with this system will continue across much of southwest lower Michigan this morning. Here's the Tom voice. Here is the forecast for the following counties. McKean. Winter storm warning in effect until midnight for elevations above 1,500 feet. And here's the new poll. The zone forecast for central and southeast Montgomery County. Today, mostly sunny. Highs in the lower 80s. The introduction of that new Paul voice was actually met with some negative reactions from listeners. 
The, this voice change is a topic of many of the videos and comments that are included in this study. Interestingly, YouTube has become a gathering place where communities of NOAA weather radio enthusiasts post audio and visual video clips for their radio broadcasts. Discussion in the comments focus on various aspects of the technology and the content, including on synthetic voices themselves. In this study, we collected relevant YouTube videos and their associated comments in order to analyze reactions to the various synthetic voices. We access videos using the YouTube API by conducting a search using keywords, NOAA, weather, radio, along with the voice names. 29 videos with 513 comments were included in the final analysis. The three authors coded and analyzed the comments using an affinity, affinity diagramming process. Coded comments were iteratively arranged into a series of sub-themes and larger themes until agreement was reached about the characterization of the commenters' reactions to the NOAA weather radio synthetic voices. Statements referring to the various synthetic voices as real individuals with personalities, private lives, and relationships occurred frequently in the comments. These were generally used to express the emotions people feel around the voices and conveyed the way they conceptualize the voices in their own minds. The change from the tom voice is commonly referred to as if it represented the death of a known person or friend. There was repeated use of the term RIP, along with many mentions of missing tom. There are occasional instances where the voices refer to themselves within the broadcasts in a fun or joking way. There are no comments suggesting annoyance that these are overtly human statements are fake or manipulative or in any way off-putting. Instead, there was acknowledgement of and appreciation for the humans behind these moments. We can listen to an example. This is the original Are you having trouble finding that special someone a gift? How about an all weather radio? Where else can you get the latest weather conditions and National Weather Service forecasts at the touch of a button? Not to mention the only place you can hear my beautiful voice. Commenters also shared stories of their memories of the voices, which come across as deeply ingrained and nostalgic. The voices trigger associated childhood memories as well as distinct memories about the voices themselves. The sense of nostalgia may explain the highly positive feelings declared towards the original Paul voice, which is objectively of lower quality than any of the later voices. Videos featuring this voice receive overwhelmingly positive and appreciative comments. The connection of the voices to severe weather event warnings means that they are potentially associated with negative, disturbing, or traumatic memories. The voices themselves, including the generally loved Tom and other older voices, are sometimes referred to as creepy and frightening. However, this eeriness is not necessarily viewed as a negative feature of the voices. Commentators specifically stated that a cold, serious, or even creepy voice is preferred. Friendliness and increased humanness are not particularly valued in these voices. Commenters describe the largely disliked new Paul voice as sounding like some cartoon character, not being serious enough, sounding so human, dumb, and too easy to tune out. Comments often mention, as well, pronunciation and prosody, meaning speed and intonation. Comments that refer, reference these features uh, after Paul was introduced are uniformly negative, with the majority of com complaints being about the long pauses. Slow delivery with long pauses is poorly received, and in some cases described as dangerous, where extreme weather events is, are concerned. Mispronunciations are identified and seized upon by multiple commenters when they occur in the videos, with some even mentioning other mispronunciations that they have witnessed aside from those featured in the video under discussion. Mispronunciation is a common complaint about Nepal and is often treated as highly unacceptable. However, mispronunciation is not always viewed negatively. In some cases, uh, mispronunciation is forgiven or even appreciated as a quirk of a given voice. Let's move on to some takeaways in terms of the design and use of synthetic voices for the radio. While participants in the exploratory focus group expressed misgivings about the viability of TTS technology being used on community radio, citing inability to connect with the voice, the comment data we examined shows anthropomorphism, nostalgia for, and an emotional connection to synthetic voices. This occurs even though the synthetic voices that have been used on NOAA weather radio are of varying levels of quality and humanness and are not presented as pseudo-human entities or made to seem particularly real. 
it's, the, it is clear that introduction of synthetic voices in, onto the radio is a sensitive matter, and care must be taken to avoid off-putting missteps such as mispronunciations of critical named entities like names of places, uh, slow utterance rates, and inappropriate voice-to-content matches. But it is also interesting to note that not all synthetic speech errors were viewed negatively. Uh, familiarity and a long-term exposure, along with the intimacy of the medium of radio itself, appear to be strong contributors to yielding positive reactions and a sense of attachment to the synthetic voices. This effect, what might be termed, termed uh, experiential exposure to synthetic voices, as observed in the NOAA weather radio comments, is not something that was anticipated by the members of our initial focus group. We conclude that future research in the area of text-to-speech technology should not single-mindedly focus on generating more human-like voices or voice experiences, and that it is possible such efforts can actually result in negative reactions and become a hindrance to the ongoing engagement with the synthetic voice. We suggest that future work on syn speech synthesis should focus on improved pronunciation, speed, and suitability of voice to content, while not assuming that increased humanness is a necessary precursor to these factors. In terms of text-to-speech applications, we suggest acknowledgement of the non-human qualities of voices and their behaviors as an alternative to attempting to present them as a pseudo-human. This is a list of the papers I've referenced here today. And I thank you very much for your time. And my name again is Kristen Scott, and thank you to my co-authors Simone Ashby and Julian Hanna.